Next I'll mention three ways that we can think about the reflection of a point through a line. One is you can imagine folding a piece of paper. The, the line that we're going to reflect across is going to be the fold. So here's a little sheet of paper and imagine some point on it. And if you can imagine this part of the paper staying flat on the table and then a fold forming right there, then point P would come up and would land over here. And the place where it would land would be point P prime. And that would be the reflection of point P. And if you were to connect those two points, the segment P P primed would be perpendicularly bisected by that fold. We could also use a mirror, and that makes sense because mirrors obviously reflect, and we're talking about reflections here. So again, imagine a piece of paper flat on the table, and the mirror is standing here vertically. So this, this is horizontal, and this segment is vertical. And here's point P down here on the page. And if I look at the reflection of point P in the mirror, and imagine the line of sight from my eye going right through that mirror onto the onto the other half of the paper. So you imagine the other half of the paper over here, and if you imagine the point on it right there where that dot would be, that point over there, P prime, is the reflection of point P across that line. And we can also reflect a point across a line by doing a construction. So in this case we're given the point P and we're given a line and we want to find point P prime which is going to be somewhere over here that is the reflection of point P across the line. And you can look and see that it's going to be about right here but we don't want to just guess about where it will be. We want to use a compass and straight edge to find the exact point and here's how. Start, take your compass and stick the point of the compass, the center the sharp part right there and then stretch the compass out so that it goes out beyond that line and swing an arc that intersects that line let me do better here swing an arc that intersects that line in two places something like that so that arc is part of a circle that has point P at its center so this distance and that distance are the same okay once you have that and you have these points marked, take your compass again and stick the point right there at one of those points inter of intersection and make an arc that swings with that point at its center and then without changing the compass, without changing the radius of the compass, stick the point down here at the other point of intersection and swing an arc over here and if it's done accurately where those two arcs intersect will be point P primed. And so if you were to draw in that segment then, that segment P P primed would be bisected in a perpendicular fashion by that line. Now I just did that freehand on the screen and it's not completely accurate. You should be able to get a diagram that is even more accurate doing it carefully with a compass and straight edge. Now when you look at this, you might remember a similar construction we did already. This is very similar to a construction we did way back in the first chapter where we took a line segment and bisected it. So in the earlier construction, uh, we were given this segment and we constructed the perpendicular bisector. Here, we were given the perpendicular bisector and one point and we found the other point over here which allowed us to create that segment. So in both cases we're dealing with a segment that gets bisected so the construction is very similar in both cases. And then what we can also see here is that if you have a perpendicular bisector of a segment then the endpoints of the segment are always going to be re reflections of each other through that line. And again, that's basically our definition of a reflection of a point through a line.